I think it's about time for us to get started. Uh, uh, welcome to week four of our iOS uh, app development course. Uh, really appreciate you guys who have uh, invested a lot of effort and time and energy into this course so far and stick, uh, stuck, stuck with us uh, to this point. Uh, many, of, many of us have unfortunately had a drop and or have um, reflected that uh, things have been getting a little bit more difficult comes midterms and you have assignments stacking on top of each other and while having had to take care of these assignments. So really appreciate you guys who uh, really value this course and what we are doing so that you can uh, stuck with us, stick with us to the end of the course. And for this week, um, we are going to be building onto our Twitter app, which is uh, Twitter part two. And more specifically, we're going to enable your Twitter app to be able to tweet content, to be able to like tweets, to be able to retweet, and to be able to uh, refresh and get new tweets, uh, I believe as a bonus assignment. So for this week, uh, and also same, same thing, uh, you're going to submit your assignment in the course portal, always remember to do so. And hopefully you guys are getting a little bit more familiar with the submission process and we'll be able to get through these more quickly without issues. And always, always remember to record your GIF with every required stories uh, showing in the GIF so that you can get points uh, from the grading system. And the deadline as always is midnight before the next session, so which is uh, Tuesday at midnight. And again, the discussion system is always helpful. Uh, if you cannot get help from the TAs or even tech fellows, uh, try to go on the discussion system and see if anybody has asked any similar questions to what you had before, and you may be able to get your question, questions resolved very soon. So for session, uh, unit four, um, again, uh, we are going to be doing peer programming just as last week before um, with the uh, end of session feedback. Uh, many of you uh, responded that you uh, really like the peer programming. So we're going to be doing that again uh, this week. So again, I would encourage you guys to turn on your webcam if you feel comfortable so that you can uh, you and your peer can look at each other and communicate. And also for this uh, this week, I really hope, um, encourage you guys also um, to share screen and see, show you um, your peer, your progress, where you are in the video so that both of you can like very closely uh, look at each other's process, progress and see if uh, anything comes up, you can also very quickly, uh, quickly discuss. And for this uh, session, we, we want to um, mostly focus on uh, getting through the assignment because this week's assignment is a little bit shorter. So we really want to uh, really help everybody finish their assignment within the class time so they don't have to worry about it later on. Or if you would like, um, use uh, your time later on to finish the bonus assignments to get your points, especially if you missed an assignment or two, so that you can make up the points and uh, you know, make up your average score. So um, for the most part, today we're going to be working on the assignment. But before we go on to um, the pair programming session, uh, we, I want to get, take also a couple of minutes and tell you guys about the tech fellow opportunities. Uh, in the meantime, while I talk about the tech fellow opportunities, um, I want you guys to also uh, send uh, text in chat, uh, text in chat, uh, maybe the text each other uh, to see if you have a specific uh, friend that you want to be uh, working with during peer programming. And then if you guys can agree to uh, join, uh, form a group of uh, two or three, then text me uh, who you would like to be uh, in a group with, then I will create breakout rooms uh, accordingly. So while I um, uh, talk through this, uh, you can go ahead and text a uh, direct message, somebody that you would like to be uh, a peer uh, group mate with, and then uh, I will put you in a group. So um, the applications for uh, the next semester's tech fellows are currently open for spring 2022. And we are going to be recruiting tech fellows, which is just like us, Isaac, uh, me, and Min, uh, who are the facilitators slash instructors for these courses. And for you guys, um, we want to prioritize you guys to choose from because you guys have a big advantage of uh, knowing these materials already. For all the tech fellows, uh, there's not necessarily ex uh, prior experience required, but uh, just like Isaac, he hasn't taken this course before. Um, when he applied 
uh, for, to be a tech fellow, but he went through the training and is able to do it uh, all, the, all the assignments and deliver the material very well. So you guys are at, event, are at an advantage where um, you have already taken this course uh, by the time you receive your training, which will essentially be the same as the course. You will be going through the assignments and then uh, you will just basically be do, working through the same stuff to making sure that you can deliver this content to the students as well. And there are many, many benefits and perks that comes with being a tech fellow. And then we're gonna take a couple of minutes to watch this Hi, video okay. and kind of just uh, do a brief overview of what it's all about. So, what, give me one second. What is a tech fellow? Tech fellows are ambitious student leaders that want to level up in their professional development and facilitate these courses to impact their community. Why should you become a tech fellow? So, of course, you're impacting your student community, and of course, you're getting technical leadership and management experience, but really let that sink in. That is the resume trifecta. Technical leadership and volunteer experience all in one position that will definitely help you stand out to recruiters and of course priority access to codepath's virtual career fair access to codepath uh, one second are you guys able to see the video all right career coaching and resume workshops we have slots ready for tech fellows to be booked um, building a network with cs students across the nation and these are other student leaders across the nation. These aren't just students. This is a network of student leaders known as the Tech Fellow Society. Of course, hands-on support from CodePath throughout the entire process. So logistically, what does the program look like? So you apply and undergo an admissions process, and I'll go a little more into depth towards the end of this video. Tech Fellows have to go through a seven-week leadership and technical training to really hone in on their skills and feel confident as a Tech Fellow. Tech Fellows then spread the word at their university, tell some friends, tell some peers, tell some clubs, and of course, then tech fellows launch the course and enjoy. And tech fellows are part of the elite tech fellow society. We have block parties and professional events and what have you. So the three courses that tech fellows bring to their campus are Android, iOS, and cybersecurity. Android and iOS actually start out with cloning apps and then students actually make their own, ready to be judged at demo day, ready to be uploaded to the app store, ready to go in their portfolio. Cybersecurity is obviously a little bit different, but it is a really in-depth look at cybersecurity because in order to stop a hacker, you have to be three steps ahead. Here is our cybersecurity CTF platform. Really cool, actually developed in partnership with Facebook. And here is um, some of our judges from one of our recent demo days. So Steve Huffman, the CEO of Reddit, was one of our demo day judges. Um, like I said, we are industry backed. So students actually showed the apps that they developed to some very important industry leaders. 94% uh, of students feel more confident in technical skills after taking a CodePath course, and 47% actually land a top tier job or internship. So in order to bring CodePath to your campus, you do need at least two student leaders, and that is to protect the tech fellow experience and make sure everyone's still having a good time. So if you know a friend that might be interested, send them this video, send them the application, which I will drop in the comments. The admission process is basically do the five minute application. You'll then get some pre-work instructions and you have to do a short pre-work assignment. And then you present the pre-work to a CodePath staff member. Once again, applications are open. Admissions deadline is October 15th. I will link the application in the comments. We hope to see you in the spring and hope to have you a part of the TechFell Society and CodePath Network. All right. So uh, really cool stuff. Uh, as I have talked about a couple of times before, the demo days that we had before at the end of the, uh, the course when everybody finished their group project. Um, during my uh, experience, uh, when I took the iOS course, no, not the iOS course, the Android course, which is the same as the Android iOS course at the time, um, we had the demo day with Steve Hoffman, which is the um, CEO of Reddit and the lead engineers of space, Facebook and engineer to be the panel judges of the demo day to judge all the apps to pick out the, like the top three best apps from all the group projects. And these top three apps were, they, were, they received, cash, uh, I believe Amazon gift card prices of, I believe, um, 600, 300 and one hundred dollars for each member of those groups. So it was really cool. And for our cohorts, um, I'm not sure exactly if that will be happening as well. But that is something that's really nice to like hope for.
And also for the tech fellows, um, they do have a tech fellow grant uh, program as well, which me and Min did apply to. And we both ex ex uh, received these grants, which are $599 for any purposes. And this was really, really helpful. So for the spring as well, if you apply to be a tech fellow and you are able to conduct the course, you will also be eligible for this tech fellow grant program, which would be $599 each person. And just a little bit more overview of what the tech fellow um, program is like, uh, what it's like to be a tech fellow. Um, so your goal as a non-credit tech fellow, um, our course is currently non-credit, but in the next semester and the coming years, we will try and again and again to push our course to be able to um, come for credit within the computer science department as some other universities have been doing. And uh, for each course that you're running, you need to ensure at least 15 students are admitted. And for us, um, for 2021 ITCU, we were very lucky to get 15 students admitted exactly. And uh, if you're able to exceed the goal, um, you can uh, recruit a maximum of 80 students for your course if you have four tech fellows on the site, which is just not very easy to achieve with at TCU since we don't have a very huge computer science department. But if you're able to exceed the goal, uh, the goal for us, we would have received uh, these incentive prizes as well, but we weren't able to, which is fine. And also, um, if you're able to, you know, this kind of a example for what you could get as, in as incentives to recruit students. And uh, this is the tech fellow grant that I talked about. We did apply, um, I believe, while we were uh, taking the training and then uh, the resu results were just announced uh, about one month after uh, our course started. So this is just kind of how uh, it's like to generate uh, applications and admitted students. And um, there are multiple ways like that we all have been doing to promote the course, such as directly in the courses, which you guys have seen. So that's just uh, some of the stuff that you guys will also be doing We'll be sharing this info. We'll be communicating with professors. If you become a tech fellow to promote the course and recruit students. Yeah, and uh, besides that, um, that's uh, mostly it. And lastly, um, really exciting news. Um, our organization has just been approved by the TCU Office of Student Organizations, which is a uh, co-path at TCU. We are now formally a student organization, which is really awesome. And we are um, going to be having events, planning events soon, and then hopefully you guys will be able to join. And then if any of you have not been uh, become a uh, join uh, our group meet yet, uh, I will put the uh, join link in the chat so that you guys can join right away. And then we will be sharing uh, the career resources and opportunities such as these that we've been sharing uh, for all of you guys. And our organization uh, is open to all students, but targeted towards computer science students. So if you know any other computer science students who may benefit from what we have to provide, which are these uh, free resources and opportunities, and just mainly a community for all of us to share resources together, then uh, we'll, you're welcome to invite anybody uh, who might benefit from this to be part of our organization as well. And the uh, tech fellows uh, are also um, welcome to, um, anybody is also welcome to apply to be a tech fellow, uh, even if they're not taking our course currently, or if they're not part of our organization and also no experience is required. So if you know anybody who might be interested in the incentives, the benefits and perks, and think they might be up to the task, or you're also welcome to share the info with anybody who might be able to, uh, might be in interested. And that'll be all. Um, uh, that'll be all for, uh, for me uh, from now, I guess. Um, so after this, uh, you guys will be put into the uh, uh, breakout rooms so that you guys can work on projects together. And one group have uh, one group has told me what who they will be working with, so I'll be put them putting them together and give me just one second, and you guys will be put in the breakout rooms right away, and then you guys can work on the assignment. And at the last fifteen minutes, we will gather everybody back, and we will also be using the end of session feedback from like last time to record your attendance.
Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Hello. Hello. Good. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, how's it going? Oh, it's going good. All right. Hey guys, how's it going? It's good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, it's uh, about time for a wrap up, and then just a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, feel free to go ahead and fill out the end of session form. Uh, right now, and uh, I will be communicating just a few more things while you guys are filling that out, and also um. Mostly, um, uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more about uh, the tech fellows that we're recruiting. Um, for the spring semester, we already have um, the three tech fellows, which is me, Min, and Isaac. We will be returning um, as tech fellows. And uh, therefore, um, if any of you are willing to be a tech fellow, uh, you will probably, probably be looking at Android or um, cybersecurity. And for Android cybersecurity, um, two things about that. Um, Android apps are definitely uh, have a very, very big market. So it's also a very good skill set to also know. And Android is coding in um, Java. So if you, if you already know Java, that's a plus for you. And for cybersecurity, the perks for that is um, um, for a lot of students, um, they are concerned about the Android or iOS course because either they don't have Mac or their computer is not powerful enough to run the Android Studio for those development. So cybersecurity in the past has been very, very popular uh, among students actually. So if you become a tech fellow and are able to uh, recruit students to run the course, um, you may have very, very good like uh, popularity. And then from there, you will have a definitely um, be able to benefit a lot of people and have a driving uh, community also. And as tech fellows, you definitely get the incentives, you know, uh, to recruit students for having a large course for you. So that's that. And as me, as a tech uh, lead tech fellow, and also the president of the um, CoPath at TCU, um, if there are other tech fellows who are uh, also wish to be iOS tech fellows and teach iOS, um, I would um, be happy to give up my place as one of the tech fellows since there may only be two or three per course uh, and allow one of you guys or any of you to be iOS tech fellows so that I will take on uh, the Android course or even cybersecurity. And with, and so we will be able to provide more courses for our students on campus, which would be really awesome. So that's mainly it. And if you have filled out the end of session form, uh, feel free to head out and I'll see you guys next session.